Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, Data Tech. I'm your host, Anand Kumar. In this video, we are diving into one of the foundational components of AWS service, VPC. That stands for Virtual Private Cloud. Before jumping into the key concepts of VPC, let's understand what is VPC and why we need it. AWS has a huge global infrastructure with millions of resources used by customers all over the world. So whenever we are doing something in AWS, such as building and deploying our own applications, how do we ensure that our resources are isolated from everything else out there? To ensure that our resources within AWS, to ensure that the isolation of our resources within AWS Cloud, we can leverage AWS VPC. AWS VPC allow us to create our own virtual network within the cloud, which gives complete control of all the infrastructure which we want to create and it enable us to launch AWS resources such as EC2, uh, EC2, RDS, elastic loads within our defined virtual network. So let's start understanding the key concepts of uh, VPC. As we all know, uh, as we all know, um, AWS regions are the geographical areas where AWS data centers are located and availability zones are basically those data centers. So whenever we are provisioning VPC or we are setting up a VPC, it is set up at the regional level, which means it span across the multiple availability zone within that region. As we can see in the first image, this uh, the whole like everything is like one reason in that reason like this is one reason in which we have two availability zone one and two and our vpc is defined at the region level and it is span over multiple availability zones so, so in this case like it's a, a span over both one and two but it could be more than that and within vpc if you look at this within vpc we have the flexibility to create subnets so we can see we have two subnets here, private, like in the first availability zone, we have two subnet, private, one private, other one is public, and the same for the availability zone two, we have one private and one public subnet. So basically we have the flexible, in VPC, we have the flexibility to create subnets. Subnets are defined within the specifically availability zones, and these are two types, public and private. Public subnet is, um, it, it is something which directly connect to the internet, allowing resources to have direct access from internet. It is useful for web services or applications or front-end systems. On the other hand, the private, uh, private subnets are isolated from the internet. It is useful for the components which we don't want to open to the public, such as database or backend system. So like if we understand this from uh, an organization perspective so the web server sits in the public subnet because that's uh, that's where like our users or our clients connect to us however our database or our anything which is developed in the back end stays in our private network which because we don't want that to be open uh, to the uh, to the public okay so we are clear with VPC. In VPC, we can have subnets and sub like VPC at regional level. Subnets are at the availability level, availability zone level, and it could be of two types. The next thing is like each VPC is assigned an IP address range, so which is defined by CIDR block. So if you look at this image here, we can see that like we have an uh, a range assigned here. Don't worry about primary and secondary. Just focus on there like. Assume it like there is only one range. So this range determines the total number of IP address that can be assigned to the resource within your VPC. So here we have three subnets and if we define a range and any components within these um, uh, within these sub subnets assign only those IP addresses which fall within the uh, that IP range. And that's called uh, CIDR block. And if we want to know how many, like how many, like for, for an IP address, for example, this 10.0.0.16, .0 how many IP address will be there? So there is a, like an open website, you can go there on the internet and like just type it there. It will tell like how many exact IP address will be available to us. 
Okay, so the next thing we looking is the internet gateway. So internet gateway is something which enables the communication between our VPC and the internet. So you can see here like internet gateway is connected only to the public cloud. So you can see this line dotted, it is connected only to the, sorry, public subnet. So which, because we don't want our private subnet to communicate uh, with public. So in that case, we, we like our communication between VPC and internet is for the public subnet only. Uh, the next thing we see here is the NAT uh, gateway. So NAT gateway is when a resource in a private subnet uh, want to access the internet. So that can be done through the NAT gateway. As you can see, like private uh, net uh, private subnet connects with the NAT gateway and NAT gateway connects with the internet. Uh, here, a, a NAT get a NAT gateway act as an intermediary. NAT get gateway basically replace the private IP address with the public IP address, uh, like with its own public IP address before forwarding it to the internet. And here the uh, the communication is one way. So uh, like private can't connect to internet and it depend on the like use case, some use case, let's say if we have to do upgrade something or something like that, that's why we need this. But uh, like nobody can reach out from internet to private network. Uh, there is one more concept which we need to uh, be aware about it. That is the route tables. So route tables are basically tables that define how traffic is routed within the VPC. By default, when we create a VPC, a main route table is created, but we can create additional route tables to control the traffic. And it basically contains just two columns, target and destination. Let's jump into the last two topics. So uh, network ACL and the security groups. These are basically additional security features. Network ACL, as you can see here, it is uh, like it is, it's basically a firewall which is, which is attached to a subnet. We can say, we can see in the images like it, it is attached to a subnet and it's a firewall. And it is basically an optional layer of security of the VPC and that uh, that act as a firewall. However, security group, on the other hand, it's uh, associated with the instance, such as like if we have a, here it says web server, but let's assume it is EC2 instance. So security groups are associated with it and it act as a firewall there. So the di main difference between these two is like it's, it is at sub, uh, subnet level, it is while this is at instance level, whether it, it's a EC2 or RDS or whatever is that. Now let's jump like how we create uh, uh, a VPC. Okay, so login into your console. So whenever we, we, we create our account, there is always a default VPC, but we have, uh, we're going to create our own VPC here. So login into your console, search for, either search for VPC or click on this VPC element. Once you are here, let, let it load and click on, then click on this VPC button. And as you can see, I already have um, uh, like a default VPC and one VPC I have created. So how I know it's default, like if you scroll here, uh, there is a, uh, like a, there is a field which can tell like which one is default or not. So this one is default, this one is I, uh, like it is another VPC which I created. If you want, you can use the default one, but like it's I always idle to create your VPC so you can set up your own rules. And let's create a VPC. Click on this, create VPC and give it a name. So I'll say my VPC2. And here is uh, like a very interesting thing came, so like a, uh, it was not there before. Uh, it recently added to the VPC settings. If you want just VPC, select this option. If you want more than VPC, so for example, if you wanna create your internet gateway, route tables, all those things, then select this option. So I prefer this one, like it shows you what need to be done and all those kind of things. And let me, and the other thing I wanna mention about is the uh, diff, like the tenancy. So as we know, AWS is a multi-tenant 
um, cloud so it can be default so when if it is default it means like we are using shared resources if it is dedicated it means like it's just to us so what we have done is we have selected vpc and more so we are going to create vpc route tables internet gateway all those kind of things here and this is the ip address range i was talking about initially so that determines the number of uh, ip addresses that can be assigned within the resources of this vpc and you can see we got almost like 65000 and a half uh, close to 60 yeah 65500 something ip addresses so we can assign all these ip addresses to our uh, like all the resources tendency i'm keeping it to default but if you want dedicated you can do that and then we pick the availability zone so in uh, in this reason, like uh, this reason, we have uh, this is US East, so we have three data centers. So they recommend two to maintain the high availability, and then they're asking like how many subnets we want. We can select zero or two. So I'm I'm going with the default. Default is two two private nets, and that uh, gateway. If you want, it's none. But if you want, you can select one and rest of the things i'll keep it same so it's very straightforward just give it a name uh then define your range i'm, I'm keeping with the default because this is that's it's a lot uh, number of ip address tenancy i'm keeping default and i'll create on uh, i'll click on this button and i say i selected vpc and more so it's going to create a lot of other things too not just the vpc it will take a very like it, it's done very quickly it will take like hardly I'll say a couple of seconds, uh, like a 10 seconds max. So it's still doing it. It's creating a NAT gateway to activate. Uh, and the other thing is like uh, the VPC services, there is no charges for it. It is free, so don't worry about it. Okay, let me refresh this. Oh, sorry. Go here, VPC. So here you see project VPC so this is our uh, like this is the, our uh, VPC which we created let me click on this and if we go subnet so it will so you can see uh, we already have a subnet here route tables internet gateway all these things i think we created net gateway too yeah so you see here so even a net gateway is, it's in pending state i think like it's still it's still uh, creating it that's why we are not seeing everything but if you go to vpc yeah it's still it's available and as as i said like with that option you can create uh, like everything in one go so that's all for this video thank you